All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how July could be extremely hot for some regions, especially the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, the Northeast, and pretty much the central and eastern United States as a whole. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also like to invite you to join our very exciting communities on Facebook and our Discord server. Those are gonna be in the comment, the pinned comment down below where you can join those two communities. I would love to see you guys there. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, how do you want this July of 2020 to go? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get into this video and we're taking a look at our CFS model, which is a seasonal model. And this is for the entire month of July. And this is what we call our 500 millibar geopotential heights. And really what this does is it shows us troughs and ridges and ridges really are usually associated with warmer than normal conditions and troughs are typically associated with colder than normal conditions. And as you can see here, for the month of July, we have a ridge in the eastern United States where it looks like there's a wave going up, up north, uh, and that's mostly for the central and eastern United States. Also, those red shades are kind of associated with warmer than normal conditions, but what's most important is those black lines where you can see those ridge up over the central and eastern United States and they trough down over the west coast of the United States. We also see those blue shades there for the Pacific Northwest. This is what we call a classic negative PNA pattern, and this really encourages tons of warmth for the central and eastern United States and cold air uh, for the western United States there. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at this in weekly increments here for the month of July, and then we're going to start getting into temperature anomalies where it's going to be more easy for you guys to follow most likely. All right, and here we are taking a look at our first week, and this is going to be for June 30th through July 7th. So we do get one June day in there, but it's not going to make a huge difference. In yesterday's video, we talked about the upcoming heat wave, and that's going to be for the first week or so of July, maybe a little bit longer. And as I'm making this video, it seems like it will be longer, actually. Uh, you can see that this is actually a very hot pattern. We have a giant ridge here forecasted over the eastern United States there. Uh, digging way north into Canada, uh, north of the Great Lakes. So this is going to be an extremely warm pattern, uh, and we're going to see the most above normal conditions there near Canada uh, for the Great Lakes, the Upper Midwest, and the New England states as the warm air just completely blasts up north uh, in a very unusual pattern here. We also see a huge trough there for the western United States. Again, this is a negative PNA pattern, and that hugely encourages... Uh, warmth in the central and eastern United States. So that's the pattern we're seeing, and it is a overwhelming pattern here. As you can see, this is an extreme example of a negative PNA pattern. Uh, very warm conditions are expected for the eastern United States for the first week of July. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the second week of July, the 7th through the 14th. All right, and here we are taking a look at the 7th through the 14th of July, and as you can see, we still have that trough in the western United States, which is going to bring colder than normal conditions there for the west coast, and the warmth has nowhere to go except for the eastern United States. Uh, you might be familiar with this pattern because this is what we had from basically late December through February. So this was our kind of winter pattern. We're seeing that return. In the summer, it's going to be much hotter than the winter, obviously, when we see a pattern like this. This still encourages overwhelmingly warm conditions here for the central and eastern United States. Again, especially the Midwest and the Great Lakes and the New England states where we're going to see the most above average conditions there. The actual hottest temperatures actually on paper, though, will still be there the further south you go, obviously. Obviously, it's going to be hotter in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi than it is in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Uh, but it, the most above normal conditions are going to be for the Great Lakes there because you average being colder than those southern states, obviously. I hope that makes sense. I know it gets kind of confusing comparing averages to actual temperatures. Let's go ahead and take a look at that third week of July, 14th through the 21st. And you see this model has us continuing in this same pattern, except that ridge kind of shifts a little bit west over the more central United States. So I think the most above normal conditions at this point will be mostly for that central region of the United States. We still see a bit of a trough there for the western United States. It's not as well defined, but we still have it. Uh, so that should still be a factor moving forward as we head towards the third week of July. We can still see we have hugely warm temperatures there for the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, the New England states. 
all of these regions are going to be well above normal. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at that final week of July on these 500 millibar geopotential heights, the 21st through the 28th. And then we're going to get into those temperatures compared to normal where it's going to be a little bit more applicable for you guys probably uh, to be able to follow. All right, and here's that final week of July. And finally, you can see it kind of breaks up. We see a ridge in the western United States as well as the central United States and a bit of a trough there for the eastern United States. So there might be some relief from this major uh, heat event here. Uh, by the time we're reaching the 21st through the 28th, obviously this is further out in the model, so the confidence is a little bit lowered, uh, but it is interesting to see that it finally has us reaching a point where we see a flip in the pattern, where we see a ridge mostly for the west and a trough for the east here. So this would bring a lot of relief from that heat and it would at least be not quite as hot. Let's go ahead and look at the same increments here, except we're gonna take a look at our temperature anomalies. First things first, here is our first week. And as you can see, well above normal conditions for the eastern United States and below normal conditions there for the west. Obviously I was already able to tell you guys this when we were looking at our geopotential heights. Uh, but like I said, again, the most above normal conditions here are for the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and then the New England states, even the Ohio Valley as well, those pinks and magenta colors. Uh, that's definitely where we're taking a look at 5 to 9 degrees above average Celsius, which is going to be huge in a 7-day increment. That's well, well, well above normal there. Probably the hottest conditions would be for Texas and Oklahoma there, though, where we still have above normal conditions. Let's go ahead and take a look at that second week on the same fashion, the uh, temperature anomalies here, and you can see we remain in that negative PNA pattern, colder than normal conditions there for the western United States. It leaves no option for the heat to go anywhere except for the eastern and central United States is a classic negative PNA pattern. And again, the most above normal conditions there are for the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the New England states. However, pretty much it's overwhelmingly warm for the whole central and eastern United States. It's going to be a hot two weeks to begin July, I'm assuming here. It seems overwhelmingly in that direction with our teleconnections. If we do see that negative PNA, that's a classic signal that we're going to have well above normal conditions for the central and eastern United States, potentially a long-lived heat wave, as I've mentioned in yesterday's video. Let's go ahead and look at week three, the 14th through the 21st of July, and you can see we remain in that pattern. It kind of becomes less confident in this. We don't see those kind of purplish shades anymore, but still, it's quite confident that we will have above normal conditions there for the central and eastern United States. But once again, uh, the most above normal regions are the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and the New England states, maybe even the Great Plains as well, uh, but still overwhelmingly warm, and still some below average temperatures around for the western United States. Uh, but as we reach that final week of July, you can see it becomes very sloppy and it doesn't quite know what it wants to do, but the most above normal conditions here for the last week of July on this model are for the west coast of the United States, which is a giant switch up from what we've been seeing on this model beforehand. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at the July temperature anomalies as a whole on this model. We're going to take a look at a couple more things on the geopotential height. Uh, just a couple frames here, taking a look at uh, some other models. And then we're going to do our comment of the day. Now, here's the month of July as a whole on this model, and as you can see, for the entire month forecast, it's overwhelmingly cold for the west and overwhelmingly warm for the central and eastern United States. So, as a whole, it looks like when you look back at July, once it's all said and done, you're going to be looking at a very hot July here for a lot of the central and eastern United States. And I get a lot of comments of people saying, like, isn't it normally hot? Well... All of these numbers are compared to what is normal for your area. So for instance, in Wisconsin, let's say your average high temperature is 86 degrees in northern Wisconsin there. Uh, now, if you're looking at four degrees above average for the entire month of July, well, on average, instead of 86, it's going to be 90. So that's how big of a difference you're going to be looking at if you see above normal conditions uh, for, the, for an entire month like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at their July through September forecast. So July, August, and September combined. And you can see we kind of stay in this pattern throughout the rest of the summer months and the early fall months. Uh, warm in the central and eastern United States and cold in the western United States. 
climate models like these do have a bias with kind of just sticking with the pattern that we're in. So for instance, we're approaching the same pattern and it's calling for it to kind of stick around. Models do this a lot, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. Usually there is a flip and these climate models do not see the flip in the long range at all. Uh, so they struggle in that area. So this might not be as accurate as the one month forecast because of the fact that it's probably just trying to hold on to that pattern uh, that we have coming up, uh, but that might not be the case necessarily. Uh, let's look at that geopotential height for July, August, September, and you can see overwhelmingly a trough in the west, ridge in the east, uh, so definitely has a sticking in this pattern, but again, really that doesn't mean much uh, moving forward. All right, now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what is the highest temperature you've had so far this year? And Braden Lake said, Buffalo, New York, 94 degrees Fahrenheit. That is very hot for Buffalo, New York, and I think that's similar to what the hottest temperature we've had here in Virginia is. So that's very, very impressive. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.